Hey Pony Pals, it's Emma from Paint Pony Studios and today you may have noticed already that I have a collection of Appaloosas here uh, for you guys. Well, I realized the other day that I uh, have been working on these and I have three of them in their various stages of completion. So I kind of thought that I would show you guys a little bit of how I do my Appaloosas. Now I don't have any of my paints or anything because these guys are pretty much, um, well, Except for this one right here, they're pretty much done for the most part with their spots and need detail work. Um, except this guy, this guy's actually all the way completed, he's totally done. Um, but I would, I'm gonna kinda give you guys a little bit of an idea of how my Appaloosas look throughout the whole process. Starting with like this guy right here, moving on to the little one, and then what they look like when they're totally finished. Because you guys from Instagram, sorry little Instagram, maybe it'll be up there. Maybe not, <laughs> but uh, if you guys have, haven't seen our Instagram, um, go on our Instagram, it should be Instagram, Pink Pony Studios, and check out the appies that I have on there because this guy is currently for sale um, off of our website or, my, or the Etsy store, um, so you can check that out. But you guys seem to really like uh, him, especially. So I thought I would give you a little bit of a sneak peek as to how I actually make these appies happen. Now this guy, he's in his very, very, very rough stages um, where he's getting his mapping on. Now if you recognize him, it's, you've, probably, <laughs> you've probably seen my Instagram story a couple times. I may have posted working on him, but this is going to be the prototype for our next uh, mascot release, Stipple, who's a black leopard nav strupper. Now, as opposed to the other two that I have sitting on the table here, Stipple is supposed to be cartoonish, therefore some of the spots are really, really big. Um, when you actually start working on an appy, uh, make sure that you have a lot of, a lot of reference photos. Now, when I, when I started working on Stipple, I used my reference photos a little bit simply because the hair pattern right here, your spots need to circle with that hair pattern. So this whole area right here, your spots should be either curving in or curving out. It's kind of like a spiral. Same with up on the um, shoulder sort of right here. You want this to go up this way, curve up the shoulder, which these spots do. And then once up on the face, they start going this direction um, with the neck. Underneath, I don't have any of his skin or anything done around his sheath or his muzzle, simply because um, I'm not working in pastels at this point. Once I get a few more uh, spots filled in and start working on his black spots, um, then I'm going to also start working on the skin. Now Stipple, because he is a mascot release and more cartoony looking horse, won't have all the details that are packed into these other two especially the um, striped hooves, seeing as he's going to have paint covering his feet. Um, but I am trying to get the coat pattern as realistic as possible for the um, fantasy type Appaloosa that I am portraying. But the whole point of showing you this guy is you can see that all this mapping starts out really rough. Like I need to do a bunch more coats over this so that it ends up all solid because you don't want you don't want crappy mapping. You really, really don't. But these are just the rough stages of me laying in spots all over his body. And I do this, um, not only does it make the black go on smoother, having a little bit of a base underneath it, but also does give you that um, halo around spots, which you don't have to do all the time, but I would recommend that most of your spots should have this little haloing around them. Moving on to this little girl here, she has most of her details done. Um, as you can see, she's missing her pastels, her hooves and eyes and mane and tail. I have already done some skin work on her and all of her black spots are filled in. I will need to run a, um, a little sanding block over her, a really fine sanding block because as you can see, when you hand paint an acrylic, sometimes you get a little too much paint on and they leave little teeny ridges. But she has most of her most of our spots are pretty well done at this point. I may need to go over some more of them. But also she has her focus camera. She also has her skin. Camera focus. 
there we go. So she's also got the little skin around her eyes, which is black, gray, and dark gray. Um, little tiny dots, but I will need to go over with pastels and make sure that that looks incredibly smooth. She also does not have her mane and tail yet. I'm thinking about just doing a very light cream on the mane and tail instead of a dark color like stipples will be or like um, the tail on the appy that I just finished. But um, when you do an appy and you, or you do a white horse, no matter what pattern they have on them, you have to make sure that you give them a little bit of shading. Seeing as she doesn't have her pastel work yet, I'm going to be doing pastels up in here, around her flank area, um, her underside, like her udders, underneath her elbows, underneath her face, her ears, her eyes, her muzzle, down by her hooves. Basically, I have to give her the full treatment of shading that I would give any other horse at this point, simply because um, a white coat does not mean the horse is solid white. And here we have our finished guy, which if you guys follow the Instagram, you've probably, probably already seen. Um, he has all his details done. You can see he's got shading up on his shoulder and like burnt umber. I've added some pinking around his flank and his elbow areas. He does even have some um, brown shading in his mane so that it brings out the herring in the mane instead of just being solid white. His feet are striped. I have striped them with um, not only the black acrylics, but on the tan parts and the gray parts with colored pencil. He does have coronary bands added in, as you can see. And then with him, um, as opposed to the little stone cutter, I did use some oil paints on him. I mixed some dark brown and black oil paints together to give his legs and his muzzle um, that sort of brown black look to them. And you always have to make sure that you gloss nostrils. Gloss nostrils, gloss eyes, and I always do gloss toes. This will give them a more realistic effect and it will also be protective so your horse doesn't get rubs in those areas. Some people also like to gloss the tips of the ears. I'm not so keen on that simply because mm -hmm. I don't think it quite looks realistic. Um, but that is totally up to you. Now my reference photo, which I don't have with me, it's on my phone. Um, he, the horse that I used had a white mane and tail, a little bit of striping, gray forelock, and gray tail. Now probably when I go to show this guy I'm going to have to put that reference photo up. But I used the photo mainly for this pattern. As you can see, as I was explaining with Stipple, it spirals around his flank area. And then as the hair pattern changes, the spots start to move in a spiral in the other direction and then up the neck. Now he has a lot more spots on his face than the other two. And they actually make up like a webbing pattern on his face and underneath his face with a black muzzle, you know, a dark muzzle and dark ears as opposed to the other two. Um, his skin also underneath and I wanted it to match the muzzle and the ears. But he, instead of having um, little tiny dots and blotches, he actually has just big patches where his you know, under parts are, where all this is right here, and underneath his um, elbows. So I didn't actually have to do a lot there. Now when I did this guy, and I've been starting to do this with my horses, is if you can see his eyes, um, there is, he doesn't actually have um, bright whites. They are tinted pink. I mix a little bit of like a burnt sienna with white to create this sort of pink color. And it's also on the other side, right there. Just so that there's not such a shocking appearance to his eyes. Now when I do horse eyes, I used to do some in colored pencil and it gave off this really beautiful effect. Well, what I've been doing now is I've mixed um, I lay down a layer of black, and I'll have to show you guys this in a separate video tutorial. But I do a layer of black, and then layers and layers of brown. And then I go over the brown with a little bit of gold mixed into a lighter brown to make this sort of circle. And then their pupils are actually blue with a little bit of a, of a metallic tint to them. Just to give the horse that lifelike appearance that you would see in real life. So there's a little bit of my tutorial on how I do my appies. I know um, 
I didn't actually physically show you how to do appies, but I thought that um, going over a little bit of the process with you would kind of open your eyes as to um, what I do and how long this takes me. Because figuring out the spot pattern alone and going over the mapping, um, I did this little girl over the entirety of the fair, so that, that was four days of work already in this little guy. Now this one took a lot longer and Stipple's probably going to take a lot longer yet simply because of the um, attributes I have to give him with being a cartoon horse. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll have to do an appy tutorial, an actual tutorial where I break up my paintbrushes for you guys soon. Um, assuming that I have time, school is starting soon, it may have started already for some of you guys. Um, which, good luck if that's the case. But for now, Pony Pals, I will see you in the next video. Bye! Ah, oh, appies are nightmares, but I love them. <laughs>